Hi everyone. We just talked about what an even function and odd function will be in last video, and now we are going to do some more examples. First, I still want to write out the properties to refresh your memory. Okay, before we do any example. So if it's even function, we have f x equals to f negative x. Okay. And if it's an R function, okay, we have very similar, just the difference among the signs. Okay, negative x equals to negative f x. Okay, so. We already know this property, so we can start. Okay. Doing some examples. First, we have f x equals absolute value of x. Okay. We're going to have three examples. And the B part is GX equals X to the Q plus 1. And C is, we have H, X equals to square root of X to the square root of 3. Okay. So, without graphing, Let's see how we can test this. Okay. I'll leave out the equation so you guys can see. Okay, basically, that's our formula. So now, let's plug in fx, okay. We know equals to x, okay. When, okay, and we have f negative x, that's what we're testing for, right? On the right hand side, equals to negative x. And because it's absolute value, so negative sign basically goes away. And we have fx. Therefore, this is even. Okay. So let's come back for number B part. Okay. We have GX equals to X to the Q plus 1. That's what's given. Now let's test for G negative X. Then we will have negative X cube plus 1, which gives us negative X cube plus 1. So we know that G negative X does not equal to GX. So it is not an even function. Okay. Then we can have negative g to the negative x. And let's see how that comes out to be. We have negative x to the cube plus 1, which gives us negative x cubed minus 1. Okay. So this does not really come out to be what we have as gx either. Okay, let's compare them. Okay, we have this. Look at this. Not exactly. We have a negative sign in front of x cubed, and here, not really either. Okay. So g negative x. This now really goes to negative gx. So, this is a function. It is not even nor odd. Oh, uh, you may ask, is that possible? Oh yeah, you're gonna see many functions that's neither even nor odd. Okay. So, let's test the third one. C. We have h negative x equals 2 negative x here equals to 
negative we can pull out okay because the square root we have an odd number it's a three okay so we can pull the negative sign out basically it does a, it does not affect our, what our solution is going to be okay and it turns out to be our negative h x right um, I'll write a better h here Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So, so which one? Which one it is? H is odd. Exactly. Very good. So, we now basically did three examples. Okay, we have an odd function. We cannot have an even function. We have an odd function. We have a function that is neither even nor odd. Okay, um, I forgot to write a word, okay, neither even or odd, I meant, okay, there's an even nor odd, all right, so, okay, and here. Um, some people may, might, may ask, you know, why are we interested even knowing whether it's a function, you know, it's even function or it's odd function. But actually, this technique is very useful, okay. Um, if the function is even, then the graph is symmetric with respect to the vertical axis. And if it's odd, that means the graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. So, we can graph it, you know, if we only know one side of the graph. And you know it's even function. You basically can, you know, without knowing all the values on the other side, you can basically graph it. It's like a mirror, okay, mirror effect. Because they're the same. So also, you know, there are certain problems and developments in calculus, which you're going to learn in college and you know, probably later on in your math course. Um can be very simplified some functions you know if you recognize the it's a even function or it's an odd function many terms can be cancelled out and it will really simplify your solution okay and the whole process of doing this so it's quite important all right and <coughs> Now let's talk about the increasing, decreasing, and constant functions. So, okay, where's my pen? Okay, here it is. So let i be an interval in the domain of a function. Then, okay, f i is basically an interval. Okay. There are increasing, decreasing, and constant functions. Okay, I'm talking about. So, if f is increasing on i, if we have b, f b, okay, greater than f a, whenever, okay, be careful, the word I use, whenever, okay, b is greater than a. I. Okay. I'm going to write a better A in I. Okay. So that's the first rule. Okay. And the second one is oh what's that? Okay. Here it is. Okay. Number two, rule number two. So when f is decreasing on i, if our f b is less than f a, whenever b is greater than a in i. Okay, so this function is decreasing. If you think of it like graphically, it might make more sense. Okay. And number three, f is constant. 
all nine if f a equals to f b for or a and b in i okay in this integral that means it's a constant because all our f value is you know f a equals to f b for every a and b in this integral okay interval okay sorry i said integral yeah means interval okay that's the three simple rules and if you think it graphically as i said earlier okay, it's going to help you understand more uh, try to graph it maybe you know draw a function and see how it goes all right talk to you soon